What's going on YouTube? Got another knife review here for you. Today we're going to be looking at the Spiderco collaboration with uh, Polish maker Marcin Slice. Um, this is his buoy folder. Um, this runs at about $300. I'm going to set that out right now. Um, so you can kind of think about that as we compare this to some of the other knives. Um, in terms of what you get on this knife, you have the standard uh, Spiderco wire clip, which is uh, set up for tip up carry left or right. Um, titanium frame lock, obviously, two titanium slabs. Uh, they are contoured, so CC'd, if you will, um, like a Strider CC. You have a G10 back strap with um, nice jimping for reverse carry um, or reverse holding or grip, if you will. And then uh, on the blade, you've got a 138 thou thick blade stock, full flat ground of CTS XHP um, and it's 3.4 inches long so you know just under three and a half inches which is kind of the uh, kind of the in industry standard if you will um, standard hardware nothing too special um, and that's pretty much it uh, a little bit of jimping here on the the black backspacer G10 backspacer as well I think the reason that I started out right away saying that this is a $300 folder, uh, as much as I like it, I like the feel of it, I like the weight of it, um, it's very comfortable, you know, in pockets and whatnot, very smooth, flips out on these uh, bronze phosphor washers, um, you know, no need for bearings and, and things like that, but, you know, perfectly centered as well, fit and finish from the Taiwan factory uh, that Spider uh, Spiderco has out there in Taizong, Taiwan. Um, just like its younger or little brother, the uh, Techno, you know, fit and finish is is incredible, you know, on these knives. And with the XP, XHP steel, um, it makes for a great, you know, EDC folder with steel that's going to last uh, for quite a while in terms of edge retention and, and all those different things. Um, but again, the reason I bring it up that it's $300 is this was released right around the same time as the Spiderco Rubicon and you know when I got this folder I, I, I mean I, I liked it but I wasn't impressed by it you know um, and the fact they call it a, a buoy folder you know when I think of buoy folder this is what I think of my CQC 13 you know this is what a buoy blade normally looks like with this long flat strong uh, stock of, of steel here and then it dips down into this nice sharp point um, right here so I think of Rambo and his monster buoy knives you know with the, the big serrations on the top and whatnot um, you know that doesn't look like a buoy blade compared to this I mean this kind of looks like a clip point blade so However they define or, or, you know, this is just Martin Slice's uh, interpretation of a buoy blade, that's, you know, that's totally fine. Um, but, you know, as I kind of do the size comparison, uh, I was saying that, you know, they, they brought out the uh, spider go Rubicon at the same time, the Peter, Peter Carey uh, collaboration. And in my mind, you know, when I had the chance to handle the Rubicon at my local store, I was much more impressed with that knife um, because I just felt like you were getting so much more uh, in terms of the design, in terms of the uh, smoothness, in terms of like what you get. You know, the Rubicon had, you know, carbon fiber scales. It was titanium liners, thick titanium liners, a uh, slightly smaller blade at a three inch blade. Um, I think the stock was probably a little bit thicker. You had a kind of a custom, uh, titanium clip as well and uh, ran on bearings so just like the Spyderco Southern it was incredibly smooth so you know really one of the smoother production flippers that I'd handled out there um, and it just felt you know the, the contouring of the the carbon fiber and everything it was super it was super smooth it was polished um, it felt great in the hand um, it had a almost like customized you know orange backspacer I don't, I'm not a big fan of orange g10 but you know if you if you really like that then it, it looks great um, and then it even had g10 pivot collars um, orange g10 pivot collars that again looked 
nice with the knife. So that one was the same price as, as the sliced buoy. And so when I kind of make that comparison, in my opinion, this doesn't seem worth it. Um, at the same time, I think that this is a, it's a great knife. Um, but, you know, when I think about Spyderco, two titanium slabs, decent steel, um, wire clip, the first thing that comes to my mind is the Sage 2. Um, Sage 2 was one of my first, I think maybe my first titanium frame lock, and I thought it was an awesome knife. Three inch blade, so, you know, yeah, you're missing out on 0.4 inches of, of blade. Uh, blade steel wise, it was uh, S30V, so it was, it's still comparable. Um, and then you had a nice choil, half and half choil in the Sage 2. Uh, man, talking about the Sage 2 makes me miss it, but, um, you know, that one can be had for like, what, one. 25 if you're lucky on the forums uh, maybe even cheaper sometimes but you know from retailers around 150 to 160 I think um, in my opinion I feel like that's a much better value you know because at $300 you're starting to creep up into the territories of mid-techs like Sabenza's uh, even this Microtech you know uh, SOCOM Delta even though yeah it has G10 scales uh, now I think a lot of them have aluminum scales but you know you have titanium backspacer, titanium subframe lock, uh, titanium clip, and then again comparable steel. This one is is two hundred four P steel, um, but this is under typically under three hundred dollars. Um, and it might you know you might say well it's a different completely different knife and that's true, but I'm just saying this is what you can get you know in terms of these knives that are offered out there. Uh, my blur. Uh, CPM 154 blur with the carbon fiber uh, inserts here you know this one was under a hundred dollars and the blade is you know blade steel again is going to be pretty comparable crazy smooth this is one of the smoothest knives on phosphor bronze washers um, you know it has speed safe and you know but you can you can take it out and this is not assisted at all you know I, I'm barely pushing on that thumb stud and it's flying out and this has what a 3.375 so three and three eighths inch blade so it's 0 0.025 inches shorter than you know the slice buoy so it's nominal at best um, this is one of my favorite production knives out there you know and considering the prices that you can get these at it's awesome you know so I know I'm, I'm I'm kind of biased here because the price point, you know, if this was sub two hundred dollars, I would be more inclined to say that you know I'd be all over this knife. At three hundred dollars, though, um, in my mind, I feel like it's not worth it, you know, because mid techs can be had, you know, um, with custom makers input and hands on these knives you know typically around four to five hundred dollars and so it's not that much more than this knife now granted you know the quality and the fit and finish of this knife honestly is is just as good you know um this is smoother than my birch you know but the birch you have much thicker stock of of titanium and uh, of the blade you have titanium um, uh, standoffs you have a titanium clip uh, and again you know these there's a lot of input straight from Mike uh, Michael Birch right so um, you know and, and in turn you know from a collector's perspective from a you know from a collector's perspective this is going to be more appealing I think you know um, you don't see very many slice customs out there and Maybe that's because you know people love them so much. Uh, maybe it's because they don't demand, uh, or there's not that high of a demand on them. But um, yeah, I mean, compared to a, a Sabenza, honestly, I, I would prefer a Sabenza. You know, um, I feel like you get a little bit more with the Sabenza than you would the Slice Bowie you know, production. So I don't know. I'm kind of rambling uh, a little bit now. Um, I hope you don't get me wrong. I actually really, really like this knife, but 
I just feel like there's so much more you could get with $300, especially when I think about the Rubicon and, and some of the other offerings that are out there. So anyway, that's my quick take on the Martian Slice Spider Echo buoy. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching as always, and I will see you guys on the next vid. Take care. Bye.